This program is brought to you by Under Armour. Welcome to a special programme looking at a special player who's changing the perception of the right back position. Liverpool and England star Trent Alexander Arnold. Thanks for joining me, Trent. Thank you. Listen, obviously it's four years since making your debut um, as an 18 year old. I just want to talk you through a few of the achievements that you've already gone through. You're a Champions League winner. You've won the Premier League. First time in 30 years for Liverpool. Winner of the Young Player of the Year. UEFA Super Cup winner. FIFA Club World Champion. England regular. The list goes on and on. How are you doing? Obviously, 30 years has taken you to win the league. We've won it a few times, mate. You know, I had to get that in there. How are you doing? I'm good. It's been a good start, <laughs> um, to say the least. It's exciting times. It's everything I've ever dreamed of. I couldn't have dreamt of achieving all this so early on. I just feel grateful for all the opportunities I've been given and the amazing people I've been able to work with and play with and be managed by and everyone who's helped me along the journey. Because the journey doesn't start when you make the debut. Mm. That's when the hard work really starts, but it starts from the age of five or six. Mm. You've got to work your way all the way up and it's tough. It's tough to do that. So you've talked about getting to this point now where you've been successful very early on in your career. What are the challenges now in terms of maintaining that success? I don't know. It's always been maybe a fear for me. It's just wasted potential. I've always been scared of being that player that had the potential but never achieved it and could have been, should have been, would have been. I don't want that. I want to be someone who did it, who achieved it, who hit them levels. He could have been club captain, he could have won these, he could have won that trophy, he could have been in and around the ball. Because you, you would have seen players like that. I mean, Michael Owen was an absolute superstar as a kid. It's gone in! Michael Owen thought you would have put your shirt on him, wouldn't you? Tore the World, World Cup apart and every came back a superstar. Mm -hmm. And through injuries, really, yeah. he didn't go on to fulfil what we thought was going to be record-breaking in terms of England goals, etc., for Liverpool and stuff like that. Is, are they... Little situations that you look at and think that I, I'm not, that I can't afford to let that happen, that my training, my recovery, my preparation, my mentality, everything has to be on point. Everything has to be on point. It's, it's, it's not just um, 90 minutes you play on a Saturday and a Tuesday or whenever you play. It's 24-7. It's, it's, it's literally a lifestyle. You could, and that that's, that's probably came from, from your mate Ronaldo, who's, who's <laughs> made football like that. Cristiano Ronaldo! It literally is every every decision you have to question, is this gonna help me? Is this is this gonna improve me? Is this gonna maybe hold me back for a day? Am I gonna miss miss something? And it's all about them decisions. People make the right decisions. I'm lucky enough to have the people around me that help me with them decisions and don't tend to even make me question too many decisions. But when I do need to, um, I'd like to think that I'm able to rely on myself to make sure I'm making the right decisions for me. Mm. You, you mentioned improving and improvements. Where next is there for you to improve as a player, Trent? Everywhere. <laughs> I think there's so many examples. Ronaldo and Messi are the two main ones I think I've ever, I've ever seen of just never being satisfied. There's always something else to achieve, and if you have achieved everything like them two, then you have to do it again and again and again. Um, so in terms of specifically in your game, where would you look at your game and go, you know what, I'm pinpoint a certain area or areas that you feel where there's room for improvement there? If you were going to say, I'm going to highlight a, a specific area. I think right now for me, I'd say the one that I'd probably focus on the most now is probably my weak foot. That's something I think about that would help me, would make me a better player, would take probably my game to the next level. If I was able to do what I can do with my right foot with my left, then you're looking at something something very special. Um, Is that extras in training on a daily basis? Yeah, it's about improving it because I'd say my right foot's age is 
21 years of age, but my left foot's age probably about eight or nine. <laughs> so it's about taking them steps and it'll take time, but if you're able to, to achieve that and be comfortable off both feet and be able to pick passes and crosses and create chances off both feet, then you take your game to, to the next level. Mm. I really like to talk about how you've helped to change the expectations and the ambitions of a right back, really. And so I'm open to, like, to anchor this little chat here in some facts that should make it a little bit clearer that this is more than just a matter of opinion. At the same time as winning the Premier League last season, you played in every single game in which Liverpool team conceded the fewest goals in the division. You had more touches of the ball than any other player in the entire Premier League. You created more assists than any other defender in the Premier League history, beating your own record from last season, by the way. And you were second overall in the league for assists, with only Kevin De Bruyne setting up more goals than yourself. And you scored more goals than any other fullback. You want me to keep going? <laughs> um, and when it came to the number of passes, you slipped a little, but you come in second amongst fullbacks to your, your teammate, Andy Robertson. Um, which must have obviously hurt a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that probably did hurt a little bit, but... You're rolling a right back now, so I'm interested to know, to know that. For me, they've got to kind of do everything. Probably like a midfielder where you, you have to demand them to defend and stop the goals, but also to be getting into the box and scoring them as well. So it's kind of... It would probably be the goals. If I can add more goals to, to my game, then it takes it to another level. Um, if I can keep improving little things, it'll take it to another level. But, like I said, the fullback role is becoming a lot more involved in football in terms of getting on the ball, dictating the play, being able to make things happen and, and do things mm. a bit more. <laughs> Uh, good. Listen, it's plain to see that you've reached new levels in providing the system right back. I mean, here are just a few little examples. You've got every club in the bag, so defenders. Aspect of football for me is passing. I think it's passes and, mm. like you said, like this, this is a nice, a pass, nice way to pass. You just when the defender thinks he can get it, it just sneaks away. They're the types of passes that. Do you, you get more to... joy out of a pass like that, or when you're down near the touchline and, and cutting one? Yeah a bit more because it takes a bit more in there. You have to think about it, you have to weight it. This better. is my favourite one, my favourite assist that you've played. Just the weight of that pass, the timing, everything was perfect. With yeah, that. that's, probably, that's probably mine. Apart from the corner, <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably say that's mine. Yeah, in the Premier League, that's my favourite assist. Um, Talking of assists, what are your targets around assists? So do you set yourself targets or is it just something you just let flow? Always double figures, always. Because last season, no, the season before when I hit 12 and broke the record, I only played 29 games. Mm. I, missed a, I missed nine with injury. So I thought if I can stay fit and I can play every game like I did, then that gives me nine more games to get one mm. more assist. So if I'm as consistent in, in getting as many assists as I was last season, I should be able to break the record again. Um, so for me, going into, going into the season now, it's trying to hit that 15, 15 mark mm. and just keep trying to set boundaries and keep trying to smash records. and. By doing that, it's helping the team to, to, to win games, to win trophies and, and be successful. So you, you talk about being an attacking-minded fullback and enjoying assists, etc. As a defender, do you go into a game just all, only talking about the at attacking aspect or do you think about, I need to keep a clean sheet as well? Is that part of your makeup, or is it just mainly the attacking emphasis? Clean sheet. Clean sheet is the, is the most important thing for me. That's what... That's the foundation on what the performance is built on. Is a clean sheet that gives you the, the best opportunity to go and win the game. Obviously, you're not going to lose the game if you keep a clean sheet. So, for us, it's it's always about keeping the clean sheet. That's first and foremost, and then going and expressing yourself and having the trust in your teammates that when you're out of position or when you're attacking, then there's someone there that's going to mm. going to cover your shift for you and just fill in and, and slot in and and cover for you. Mm. Is in your passing range and the variation over long mm -hmm. and able to to do the passes and, and and stuff, but it's also about having the players in the right positions and to be able to affect the game because it takes two to make a good pass. But whether it be at one end of the pitch or the other end of the pitch, I'm trying to be as effective as possible. So if I just mentioned the the great man's name, Klopp. What what if you could pinpoint a one or two influences? that have been significant in your career so far from him, what would they be? I'd say 
the confidence to just go out there and express myself, that's the, the, the biggest one for me. Having no one I've got is trust and faith to go forward and not be restricted to only being a defender. Like maybe back in the day that was how the game was played, but now being a modern day fullback, he's given me the freedom to go forward and express mm. myself and create chances and cross the ball and make my own decisions and not being told what to do. So for me, it's just the freedom that it, that he gives me is my management and how he's helped me grow and learn, told me what I need to improve, what I needed to get into the team when I was younger, how to keep me place and just keep teaching me lessons on, a, on, on an everyday basis. Is that, would, would, he, would he, on the training field, pull you aside and say, listen, the last game I saw something that wasn't quite right, I need, I need this, so I expect a bit more here? If my positioning's not quite right and I've been caught out, then he'll talk me through where I should be, when I should, say if I've tried to press and it's been the wrong time and then just play around me too easily. It'll be, you don't have to always go because mm. when you're young and naive and you get desperate to get to people, you, yeah, you're right? desperate to, to jump out, and that's when you just get played around different in, in the grand scheme of things. Mm. Me personally, be growing up watching him, he's the best right back that I've ever seen. I want to know for me if I'm if I've got the qualities to play in midfield in the Premier League. That was probably the night when I, I fully believed in my head that I, I can. I can kick it with the best. Where do you think you stand versus the likes of Giggs, Gerrard, Beckham, Lampard on the assist per game ratio? This programme is brought to you by Under Armour. This programme is brought to you by Under Armour. Well, this graph shows the number of assists that the top flight fullback in each Premier League season has achieved. And I think it helps prove that at least one aspect of what you're doing that is assists is very different to right backs of the past in this country. When we look at the graph, the typical number of assists in the season have averaged around seven. And then, surprise, surprise, you broke the record two seasons ago with 12 assists and then promptly broke that record again with 13 assists last season. The average was around seven. And yeah. Your last two seasons is above 12. <laughs> Talk me through that. I remember... When, I must have been about 14, 15, maybe 16, 17, I can't remember. But I remember speaking to my brother about that and I was, I was always looking at it and I was thinking, they're playing 40 games a season, why are they getting four or five assists? This should be more, I feel as the old players can achieve more and there should be more. Do you think the systems have helped in terms of numbers or is it, is it more down to the players as well? Uh, because the attack is I think the system, more I think, Yeah, I think, I think the systems have helped because, especially like diamond systems and, and, and stuff like that and the, the variation of formations mm. and obviously like Go and wing backs and stuff like that have, have really helped, and um, I think nowadays it's it's a, it's a massive role for a fullback to be able to create and score goals. Mm. I mean, you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself to get the hat trick to be the number three, the third on the, uh, in a row. I mean, Leighton Baines has got five. He won the title five years um, over five years in his career. That's got to be a target that you're looking at to to, to beat him, though. No? Yeah, I think. Um, remember, our ball was there as well. It's going to be difficult, but. There's players like that, like Robbo and other amazing fullbacks in the Premier League that push you to, to next mm. boundaries and you want to achieve more than them, really. You want to be the best. That's just the mentality of every footballer and every athlete is you want to be the best, so you've got to outwork them, you've got to outdo them, you've got to outperform them. Um, so that's the benchmark, is setting your levels higher than everyone else. Mm. I mean, over all of the Premier League seasons, apart from the past two, the defender that has had the most assists has averaged 7.15. In breaking the record for assists in both of the last two years, you've averaged 12.5 assists per season. Incredible. That's 75% more than the top defenders each season from the past. That is an incredible <laughs> jump in comparison to the players that have gone before you. I mean, you've got to do something to keep that up. I mean, mm -hmm. that's a, that's a, a, the benchmark you've set there is, is very high. Yeah. Are you putting pressure on yourself to do that? I mean, you spoke about setting targets and stuff like that. Yeah, I should be. If I'd be disappointed if I never broke that record again. I've spoke openly to friends and stuff about 
on Bree's record, shared with the Bruyne now, um, which is obviously a tough task, but it's achievable. Big task. Yeah, but I think for me, if if a fullback can achieve 15 assists, then that that's something special. Um, that's what I want to achieve. I want to be breaking records. I want records to stand for a long time. So I want my name to be remembered in Premier League history. I kind of want fullbacks in the future to look and think how how did they achieve that? That's not mm. possible. Um, just like maybe like the Invincibles or people who set points records and stuff like that and goal records and you look at it and you kind of like question how did someone even yeah yeah how's that even possible? So I want things like that to to happen. So if that's so happening, why, why haven't fullbacks topped that that assist chart in previous years? Maybe restrictions from the manager. Um, I don't know. Only they can really answer that. All I can say is that, like I've sh I've shown the last two seasons, that it's possible to to be hitting them numbers. Mm. Um, some people don't get the freedom to go forward that much, and there's teams that like like the defenders to stay in in defence. So there is restrictions, but I'm lucky enough to have a manager and a system that really accommodates accommodates mm. me going forward. So in your training approach, is that? Is there a lot of repetition in terms of the passing, the angles, the, the different types of park crosses and the assists that, that help you achieve these numbers? Or is it something that's been quite natural? Because you told me you've only been playing right back for since you were 17 years old. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's amazing to see that you're actually now one of the best, if not the best right backs in the world. Yeah, it's obviously it's been a short, a short period of time. But I think the main thing is probably knowing your players, which is, which is important, knowing the attackers, where they want the ball. Mm. Um, if I'm fizzing it in at Sadio's left foot, it's going to be difficult for him to score. If I can find him on his right or mm. in the air, the detail. Or, yeah, it's a, it's the finer details that just make that chance a little bit more 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 achievable for for the for the striker. If he wants the ball in the corner, knowing where to, what areas to put the ball in, um, knowing people's strengths and just mm. trying to trying to give them what they need to score. Premier League greats, where do you think you stand um, versus the likes of Giggs, Gerrard, Beckham, Lampard on the assist per game ratio list? Where do you think you would sit in amongst them or do you think you'd even be amongst them in the Premier League we're talking about? I think if you're looking at it in terms of like a maths point of view, I've got to be in and amongst them. Um, but that's just because of how many games they went on to play. They played... Five, six, seven hundred games. Um, Where would you put yourself? One to five. Middle mark, I'd probably say. Well, three. Number three yeah, amongst yeah. Giggs, Gerard, Lampard, Beckham. Here we go. Second, just just nudged out by David Beckham. Unbelievable. Huh? Yeah. Did you have a go? Did you know that stuff? No. No? No. How does that make you feel? Because I know that there would have been players there that, that you got your, your ex captain there, yeah. legend of the of the club of the city, and amongst the other greats of other clubs as well. Premier League legends, all all four of them. Um people that whose names have respect you respect what they've done, whether regardless of who they play for, there's there's certain players who achieve things that you you've just got to respect. Mm. No matter putting club rivalries to the side, as a footballer, you know how difficult it is to achieve the things like that, what they've achieved. And I think they're the type of levels that I want to be hitting at the end of my career. I want to be mm. in and amongst them names. I want respect from all fan bases. Um, I think a lot of players, that's what you want. That's yeah. what you're striving for. Obviously, you want to win things. You want to win titles, but you strive to have the respect of the fan, yeah. your your peers, yeah. the people in the game. Don't you? Yeah, to get the respect and to be talked about for a long time, it's about being consistent, and that's over. That's not over two or three years or mm. four years. You've got to be at the highest level for we're talking seven, eight, nine, ten years. Mm. For anyone who achieved that, they deserve all the respect that they mm. get. And there we saw on that um, graphic there that you're amongst some of the Premier League's all-time greats, midfielders. Is that somewhere you see yourself playing? Because a lot of people, when you speak to them, oh, Trent could play in midfield, he played there as a kid. Is that something you think, you know what, I'd, I'd love to do that. We've seen the likes of Kimmich, we've seen the likes of Lam, who's one of your mm -hmm. heroes, who you yeah. looked at as right back. Danny Alves has played in there before. Is that something you see yourself wanting to do, can do? It intrigues me. It does, it intrigues me, because... 
14 and being able to do it at the highest, highest level and the best league in the world is a, is a whole, whole different kettle of fish. Um, the pictures are different, aren't they? Yeah, but I feel as though, right now, I feel as though I, I get more of the ball than the midfielders, like you've seen from the touch graphic and the passes. I'm getting probably more of the ball, um, getting more touches of the ball, so I'm happy with that. that mm. if, if I'm getting the most touches in the game, that means I'm, I'm putting a a stamp on the game or should be, game, I should be yeah. influencing the game. Mm. Uh, you must have had conversations with Klopp about this, no? Like no. if there's injuries or put me in there, boss. Not really, no. I've never questioned any of his decisions because not only do I feel as though like I've got his trust, he, he knows he's got my trust and I'd never I'd never question it mm. because of the amazing things I've seen him do and the way that I see him go about things. So mm. I've never I've never pushed him to make a decision on that. I never would. It's it's up to him if he decides to, to play me centre back, centre midfield, up front, that's his decision and I'll 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 try and do my best no mm. matter what. So if and when that time comes, I'll be ready for the challenge, I think. Good, good. Listen, I think it's interesting to compare like your stats with the guys we were just talking about. Um in, in my mind have been some of the best right backs in Europe who've moved into midfield. Um, at certain times, Philip Lahm, Joshua Kimmich, Danny Alves. This graphic compares all of your statistics based on playing across the big five leagues. I mean, and you stand up very well, by the way. It takes less time to get an assist from you um, than when any of these others, but you and Kimmich created the most chances two every 90 minutes. I mean, for, as a, again, for a right back to think you're creating two opportunities uh, in a game, every game is, is phenomenal. Yeah, to be... In and around the same numbers as, as them legends, like you see the the assists and that of, of Danny Alves, mm. over 100, 100 assists is, is so special. It's probably slept on a little bit. Um, but for me, I'd probably say he's, from me personally, be growing up watching him, he's the best right back that I've ever seen. Alves? Yeah. Yeah, especially going what, what aspects of his game do, do, do you like? Do you look at and think, yes, that's that's something that I want to bring into my game? Because I've done that quite a lot. I used to look at players and think, I want to take that. I'll look at some, another player, I, I want to take mm -hmm. that element. Do you know what I mean? For me, it was a little bit of his mentality in terms of wanting to, to go forward and create and be in, in and amongst the goals and be scoring and assisting and being influential in the game. Um, his fitness was massive at the time. Not many fullbacks were were being were capable or having the demands of being able to make it to one back, box to the other. It was more. He your patrolled own box. the whole side, yeah. basically, yeah. didn't he? He was he was everywhere, drift inside, drift outside. He had that freedom to to really go where he wanted um, and just influence the game. Um, f but the the main thing for me was just. Being in and amongst the attack and the the attacks, mm. being someone who could get the ball and make things happen, that was probably the night when I, I fully believed in my head that I, I can I can kick it with the best. Can we just talk about that corner? <laughs> I don't think to smile to your face. I actually weren't meant to take the corner. So was you just looking there? Was you looking right now? I was just there, and I just walked away, and then I've seen it. In one. Ah, oh, I love it. This program is brought to you by Under Armour. This program is brought to you by Under Armour. I mean, we've talked loads about your attacking attributes, which is, and rightly so, but I have to admit, the moment I, I kind of realised that you had what it takes to be a world-class defender was, I was at the game actually, um, at Anfield, is when you came up against uh, Leroy Sane mm -hmm. in, the, uh, in the Champions League quarter-final in 2018. Talk me through that game, and did that have any... After we went to um, Sellers Park and it was Zaha, he gave me a bit of a, a tough time as well. So then everyone was questioning whether to put me in for this gauge and I'd be able to, to do, have the night that I did. That was probably the night when I, I fully believed in my head that I, I, can, I can kick it with the best. It, would you say that defending is an area you feel you could still improve on? Massively, yeah. massively. What There's... areas would you, would you highlight? I found as a young defender, 
it wasn't until probably my 20s, mid 20s, where I felt concentration wise, I had my finger on the pulse. I kind of understood the game enough, understood other people's positions mm -hmm. to really concentrate on my own game and maintain concentration, not for the a half, for 93, yeah, yeah. 94 minutes. I don't know, I say there's different levels of, of my concentration at the minute where it depends on the opposition still. I find myself in the, in the highest of games, just 100% all the time, concentration, but we're to the point where after the game I come off mentally exhausted because mm. I've just been concentrating so much. And then in some other game, positioning, uh, moving your feet right, being able to your body shape, making sure you get in the race as soon as possible. Um, Do you watch clips? Some people just look at their best clips, and that's for their own personal confidence, and that's sometimes what gets some people by mentally. I was very much, I want to see the things I've done wrong, and I want to zone into it, mm -hmm. highlight, and think about it when the game comes, and this, this scene comes about again, I've seen it before, I've highlighted it, let me, let me rectify it. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you along them lines? Yeah, it's embarrassing, there's, there's a sense mm. of like... It's, pride. Yeah, your pride's dented when you've made a mistake or someone can get by you too easily. Um, or someone snuck in at the back post and scored and you feel like you've let your team down. So for me, it's about watching them clips back and making sure I never feel like that again. That, mm. I'd say, like I said, the, 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 the Rashford game, that's the biggest lesson. That's the best thing that's ever happened to me, really, mm. because the feelings that I felt, I made sure I said to myself, you can't feel like that again. I felt like I'd let everyone down. I felt embarrassed. You don't want to go anywhere, do you? Ashamed, no. I just wanted to, to crawl into a ball and <laughs> disappear, but you've got to be a man. You've got to face up to them mm. them, them things. And Because at the time, the, my career was just going like that, and then it, it, hit, it hit a wall. Um, and it was about whether I stand there and I stop and think I, it's, I'm, it's too much for me, I can't play at this level, or if I break down the wall and kick on. But mentally, for a young player to see that and acknowledge that and then to work on that and to say, right, I'm not going to accept that again, this is me, I'm going to go forward, I think that's... Oh, again, because you're the one that everyone wants to beat. I want to have won silver with England. Hasn't been done for years. No, <laughs> no, you're right. <laughs> This program is brought to you by Under Armour. This is the journey Safia had to make every day. In the blazing heat, she collected water for her family. Children like Safia have to spend hours doing this every day collecting water that is filthy and full of disease. Every two minutes, a child dies from dirty water and poor sanitation and hygiene. You don't need to see Safia drink dirty water to know it isn't right. We're asking you to change the picture. Please call or text WaterAid to give two pounds a month. Your two pounds a month can change the picture and help communities change their lives forever. WaterAid and our local partners are already working with communities, giving people the tools and knowledge to create long-term clean water solutions. We've already reached over 27 million people, but we won't stop until we've reached every child. A life of possibilities starts with clean water. So please text WATER to 84222 or call 0800 088 7733 to give WaterAid two pounds a month. Together, we can build a world where everyone, everywhere has clean water. Together, we can change the picture. Thank you. This program is brought to you by Under Armour. I just want to get your take on this. When we used to win things back in the day, in my day, I would enjoy the night. I'd have an unbelievable night. Enjoy it to the fullest. Last man standing, trying to be that guy. 
But then as soon as that night's finished, I was on to what's next, mm -hmm. what's coming next, who are we getting to the CEO, to the manager, who's our next, next acquisition. Um, always thinking about the next thing. And we, I didn't enjoy, when I look back, I didn't really enjoy yeah, it yeah. for long periods. And I feel like I regret that a little bit sometimes. But on the other hand, maybe it's what kept us yeah, like, sustaining, so winning, and being mm -hmm. successful. Where were you with that? I'm the same. I feel as well, like the team as well, the mentality of the team, the manager. It has to be like that because you can't stay at the same level. You always have to improve mm. because other teams around you will go out, spend money, get more players. Chelsea have just done that. <laughs> get, get new managers always trying to evolve and improve and get to that level that, that, that you, you being the champion, you're the one that everyone wants to beat. Mm. Um, so that's, that's, that's our mentality going into the season now is we know that we are the, obviously we're the champions and stuff, but we're the team to beat. Everyone it has that that extra little bit of motivation for other teams. When it's they, everyone else's cup final. Yeah, when they exactly, play, you know? exactly. Mm. So we need to make sure we match that level of, of intensity, of that attitude and make sure that we're 100% as well, mm. um, which has got us to where we are now. But we have to maintain that and we can't slip off. Um, so it's also about improving, evolving, making sure that we don't take our foot off the off the gas mm. and we keep pushing because there's so much more that we can achieve individually and, and as a team. We talk about pressure. Do you feel a bit more pressure being a local lad, being a local Liverpool, Liverpool boy? There's a deeper connection with the fans maybe and that pressure that comes from them at the expectation levels now. No, I wouldn't say I feel any pressure. Not at all. I feel as though I have a special relationship with the fans. And they, I get how they think and the ways that they think, understand their thought processes and feel as though they can relate to me because I'm from the same city and from the same areas and stuff. But I think there's no pressure there for me. I think it's just a better feeling when I, when I can achieve things. It's, I can celebrate with a lot of people that I know who have waited so long for this, people crying and everything like that. It's just amazing feelings to have. It's, there's no pressure there, but it's, there's more people who, who feel as though that they're closer to it because they know me and stuff. Mm. So there's a lot more messages and, mm. People congratulating you and it's emotion. yeah, there's a lot more emotion involved in in the game um, when you're a local lad. But there's 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 not extra pressure because I'm still young, I'm still learning, I'm still growing, and and fortunately they understand that. And talking about all of that, about the fans and that connection and stuff like that. Um, let's fast forward six six seven years. You've won everything consistently, sustained this success and domination with Liverpool. I've said, you're, you're driven, I can, I can sense it through doing this interview with you. I can tell there's a drive inside you to be the best you can be and achieve and set new records here and there. Would that ever mean swapping countries, swapping clubs and doing something somewhere else and testing yourself? I, I didn't do it. I, I sit here and think I should have because mm -hmm. I reckon I was good enough. I should have tested myself abroad and maybe I'd have, I would have achieved even more, maybe. I think... Obviously, the mentality now is I'm a Liverpool player um, and that's where my head needs to be. I want to achieve as much as I can with Liverpool. Whether that changes in the future, who knows? Um, but I think if that decision needs to be made, I, I, I trust myself at the time to make the right decision, whether that be I need to try and achieve something somewhere else and I, I need a different challenge or... Um, I stay and try and achieve as much as I can at one club. I can't say right now, but I can say that I'm a Liverpool player right now and obviously I want to achieve as much as I can while, while I'm at the club, whether that be for 10, 15 years or mm. whenever. Um, I think my problem was when you're winning, you've done everything to get to the top of the mountain and keep winning and stay there. And you know every year you're competing. And every year you're going to be mm -hmm. in and around the steps to be walking up the steps to pick up a trophy. How can you leave? Yeah, that's, yeah. How, that's how I used to think. 
yeah, that, no, I understand that mentality. It's like you've just struggled so for so long, mm. and then now you're there. <laughs> Why would you go back to the uncertainty? It, yeah, it, the yeah. uncertainty of mm. can I do this? And it, it's probably just I don't know, just that that comfort zone kind of kind of feeling, and whether you're willing to to risk it or not. And I think. Like you said, for you, you were you were able to to not risk it and still be able to achieve amazing things mm. after that and um, stuff like that. So, I, I, like I said, I trust myself to to make the right decision at, at the time if that mm. does come around. Well, let's talk responsibility. That means the armband. I know I've heard you say you want to be Liverpool captain one day. Yeah. That's one of your dreams. Mm -hmm. England captain. What type of captain would you be? What do you see yourself in the future being? Someone like, uh, before you answer, I'll give you a couple of variables. It could be, you could be the shouter, the baller, the one that cajoles everybody, grabs people, or the, the example, someone who's the quiet but leads by example and has that authoritative demeanour. I think the best example I've got is, is Hendo at the club, Paul. Um, 